uh, performance group for the Woodlands Youth Corral. Uh, Mrs. Escobedo and Miss Perry used to, uh, they're the directors. And um, it was a wonderful experience because we, we had our plays, we had our songs. I sang alto, I got, I got, I got put in alto. I want a soprano. <laughs> but now that I'm grown, I see how the alto fit. I never thought I was suited for alto. Laura Harton, shout out girl. You had the most beautiful voice, girl. And then Paige Valentine, you know, in school. Those were the singers. <laughs> and Laura, she had alto. I had no alto, okay? But um, there were wonderful performance times. And so, even though my dad had funded a mistress's child on the down low, I was given the opportunity to grow, to look at it, and then to heal from it, you know? And then on the upside, I had a peer that actually brought it to mind. That was a very sophisticated thought, you know? It wasn't one of ego. It was not one of self. She elevated me from my ego and from myself, you know? And uh, that was a very humbling moment. We need friends to humble us in these kind of moments. You know, because when, when we all get led astray, sometimes a lynch mob grows a hydra head, and before you know it, everybody's lost in the sauce, you know? Everybody can change, hit reset, you know, and uh, get right with their souls and serve the light, you know? And then to really elevate it, go wake up the others, bring them with you, you know? We need these kind of talks with each other. It's not often somebody has the forthright mind to speak into it, and that's okay, because it's a lack of experience. If you hadn't had the experience, how can it be common sense, you know? And so if that's the only river you know, how do you know how to shake it up a bit whenever you don't even look at the content you're in? So she elevated me there. And then when it comes to the tarot readers, you don't get just a tarot reading. You get the playing field and the moral aptitude and the conviction. Because I look at it like this. If you can't smell your own shit on your knees, how do you know the shit is there unless somebody points it out? It's, you know, it's very literal like that. And it's not to say you're doing it to be a jerk. It's to say you're taking the hits to invest in somebody, you know, because here is the adage. Risk the heart of a friend and kiss the enemy. So while you just may placate somebody, you know, you consider an enemy just to get your way, sure. But whenever you deal with your friend, you're risking pissing them off. You would rather risk them getting mad, pissed off, angry, and upset just to speak into them. That's a good friend. That's a good friend. And the friend that is permissive and just lets you skate by without checking your moral aptitude, what kind of friend is that? You know? You need, it's not to say if you're in the, uh, if you camped in the uh, wrong side of the town that you can't readjust. It just means it's a good thing to visit these contexts on the regular because why? It all boils down to ethics. Without ethics, we are a lawless society. When without ethics, there is no basis of authenticity. Therefore, 
it means motherfucking fake as fuck. You know? But being able to elevate of all the years I grew up in the Catholic Church doing the choir. Man, you guys fucked over a really wholesome girl, okay? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I did choir throughout fucking school. I was in choir like in fifth grade with the performance arts with Mrs. Perry and Mrs. Escobedo in the Woodlands Youth Chorale. Shout out to uh, Rodney Abbott. <laughs> He's on my uh, class of 1989. He was in there. You know, and Jimbo, shout out to you, Jimbo. He was in there, he's passed on. But uh, choir, performing arts. I did choir in uh, junior high. I did choir in high school. I did choir in the church, bitches. <laughs> I was even married in the Catholic church. And then you all gang stalk me like I'm a freaking criminal, miscreant. Y'all need to check yourselves. Not for me, for you. And this is the conversation I'm having with you guys with a great deal of respect because this would be the most honest conversation you'll ever have. Because when you're in Sodom and Gomorrah, who is the one that helps keep you guys in check when you all are partaking? and all of the, uh, et cetera. You guys are gang stalking me, sure, whatever. But you have to understand, if you really wanna elevate, if you really wanna learn to manifest, here's the deal. You can't do it unless you are upright, unless your vibratory frequency is up there. And if you had invested all of this time and effort running sideways game, backstabbing everybody for your gain, honey, what you did was buy into pyrite. I mean, do you understand that sugar and salt look the same, but are they? Does pyrite and gold look the same, but are they? This is what you're doing to the essence of your spiritual fabric. That's not a joke. That's a big deal. Because, you know, who cares if God is real, isn't real? Who cares if Jesus Christ is real and not real? And who cares if the devil is real or not real, okay? At the end of the day, it's science, quantums, right? Whatever choices you are conveying within the context of your experiences, that is the vibratory frequency you plug your avatars into, my loves. And you cannot rise higher than the vibratory frequency you're at. So what that means, if one of your uh, cohorts, say you uh, are the gang, gang stalking crowd, and uh, you have no idea about the uh, organ trafficking or the sex trafficking or the ushering in of the fentanyl.